Okay, back online. Um, so left nine is uh, what was that? Oh, uh, in, in diffraction, interference. Fun, 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 fun stuff. So just, just relatively hard to understand conceptually. I have to agree. I have to confess it is kind of hard to understand. Uh, so, like my we, what we have is uh, let's first discuss two double slit. A double slit. We have a distance L. Oh. Yeah. So distance between two slides is D and uh, angle is theta. So you can you can you can construct a triangle such that those two edge is have the same length. Since it's so narrow that this angle is almost zero, then that is perpendicular. Both are perfect, both are 90 degree. So you know this is 90 degree as well. So you can know from the trigonometry that this is the last bit of that is D sine theta. So that's the distance difference between those two light travels. So by by calculating this, we can know the phase difference between those two light. To show the wave feature of light. So sine theta equals m lambda, which is m wavelength. That is constructive interference. And uh, on the other hand, this is destructive interference, which is minimal. something. Um, so let's study this. Let's just focus on bright spot for now, which is here. Constructively interfering, constructively interferes, interferes points. Uh, oh, sorry, D sine theta. So sine theta equals. You, you, you can know from the trigonometry that you, you define here is x, so you know if for really small theta, you know theta equals to tangent sine theta, even sine theta as x over l. And that is equals to sine theta as n lambda over d. So then you can have n lambda over d dot l. That's our oh, well, that's our that's our formula for how to calculate where is the bright spot in the center. Uh, so the. For double, uh, that's for double slit. You can you can see that there's both these bright bright dots and everywhere. You can see that if you have a you have a shorter wavelength, you're expecting to have a to have the, the, the spacing between them is less, is less, and if you have a longer wavelength, the spacing between between them is wider. This is more is larger, and it, you can just use this formula to see like if. Is any anything is bigger or smaller? How was the spacing between them will be, right? Uh, so, so there's a second knowledge point. Oh boy, uh, mm, doubles, uh, symbol slit. Let's just make a classical analogy. Oh, but I also I also mentioned today. Well, uh, 
this if you have a really small hole, it, it's a wave, the wave feature will behave, behave like that. So if you have a pump, you have really compound, you have really small openings, you, you pedals to have some, you excite some wave, you will see some like spherical wave. If you have really big opening, then you will see like something like that. Like you can even you can see a really almost like straight line boundaries that that behave like a light be like light beam. So that is a wave feature that is that is a particle feature of wave. Or for, for light it just like for this you can see you can see a pattern like like that. For this you wouldn't see you would just see a pattern like like that for really big opening. That would be just like looks like a like a laser like a really bright spot that, uh, produced by the laser. Um, yeah, that will be and also those two effects are act together. So so effectively, every slit, single double, the double slit of every slit of the double slit is a, it will have a this effect. So what, essentially, what we have is this. As you can see in the lab, we have that because you can see in between there's some really really dim space. That's what happened here. Okay. So far, any questions about this one? Cool, almost there, lab 10. Yes, lab uh, 10. Um, lab 10 is, uh, oh, uh, is polarization. Okay, polarization, lab 10. We, we can just think of this like a polarized light as a vector. You can, you can decompose it into you can decompose it into two two components. Say there's there's one that is like called I say parallel. E parallel. E perpendicular. So if we have a polarizer, what polarizer does is just select one orientation of the polarization. So we, if we have a, no, come on, come on. we have a polarizer with orientation like this. So we only select orientation oscillating with orientation like uh, aligned with that E parallel. So the E perpendicular is illuminated. That means we only have have a have a lens have a electric field strength or the light 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 brightness like that, which we can we can calculate in the sense of e cosine theta. Yeah, and, and we know that I is the intensity is per proportional to the electric field strength squared. So we have E parallel is e, sorry, I parallel is I theta squared. Make sense? Cool. And then they can apply to several other you can apply it to any scenario that we have. For instance, we have a, we have an example. We have time for an example, I guess. Um, we have zero and ninety degree. One polarizer. That's one. That's first polarizer. That's our third, second polarizer. Was the light intensity will come out of it, right? Come out of it. Zero exactly. So. Because there's no parallel component of this our oscillation orientation, but if I add a third, uh, a second, insert a second one, like 45 degree, like that's the first one, that's the second one, and that's the third, a third one is 
is perpendicular, we will end up having some light coming out of it. So in the sense that we have light this way at 45 degrees, you can you can you can you can, you can draw a parallel component of it at the 90 degree. You can you can draw a parallel component of that as well. That will be the final stress of the of, of the, after the three polarizers. So that's how you deal with deal with that. It just decompose it to to per parallel perpendicular component, just like what happens in the mechanics class, and then calculate it using using a formula like this because of trigonometry and cos e, e parallel equals to e cos and say and you know i per, uh, proportional to e squared so then i parallel equals to i cos and theta squared yes cool mm -hmm. any questions thank you Thanks. <laughs>